I think we got to yep. review the weekend a little bit. It was a oh, big, man. big weekend. Cross country is officially back. I feel like we've had a couple of weeks in August, but now people are racing. There's oh so gosh. much going on. Oh my gosh! I mean, I guess we got to start. We've been talking about them for the past two weeks. Loud yep. Valley out of Virginia. Man, I mean, there was a little bit of uh, maybe doubt that yep. would they perform up to what we thought they could, but right. did they answer that uh, call at PTXC nine? Yes and no. In their top four, without a doubt. I mean, they're solid. You know, in the week leading up to it, our Virginia webmaster, Noel Jez, was throwing some shade at Pennsylvania across country. No respect there. Our boy, Rusty, you know, Pentrack was backing him up. He finished less than a second, and but Loudon Valley went one through four. He was so close to breaking it up, but that pack running is really strong. I'm still not sold on their fifth man. We got to see that transfer come in. He hasn't raced yet. Make sure he's healthy and he can execute to that level. But their top four are incredible. Affolder just cruising through. We know he's going to move up. Top four is solid. But if you don't have that fifth man in place, that's not going to get you through the nationals. But for the most part, yes, Loudoun Valley is the number one team in the country right now. We'll have to see how they develop throughout the season and whether or not that fifth man's going to come through, though. Do they lose a single race up until NXNR Southeast? No, no. If you look on their website, their their schedule is pretty soft. You know, they might not race out of Virginia again the rest of the year. Potentially, there may be a big meet on that's not on their website, but going off of that, it's a soft schedule. They might get some perfect 15 scores in there as well. Yeah, and we also got to see Fateville Mendeleev. At, yep. at VVS Invitational, I mean, they right. came out and, you know, they did not surprise at all. They were killer up front. I mean, they scored a yep. low, I think, 20 points. And even at, through the merge, too, I think 32 points, they are just reloading. I yeah. mean, they're exactly what we thought they would be. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be interesting there. I think I may go in a different direction and say they might lose this season. But it really depends on whether or not they get into a big invitational with the right teams. You know, we've seen that they've been vulnerable before. We saw a number of years ago when Elmira upset them at McQuaid. And that was the first time in almost seven years that they lost to a team from New York. I think we could see some vulnerability here from Fayetteville Manlius, but it depends if they get one of those head-to-head matchups. We've seen Centerville Golden McQuaid in the past. You know, Shen, we hear, is really strong this year. But depending on FM schedule, are they going to go to McQuaid and Manhattan? Are those teams going to be there? You know, those teams don't always raise those big invitationals with them. But hot take, if that happens, the FM girls will lose a race this season before nationals, but the FM boys won't. Fair enough. Heard it here I, first. I think they're they're experienced laden. You know, they're they're yep. very, very solid up front with seniors and juniors. And, and in the past, they've been a lot uh, of uh, sort of underclassmen kind of leading the charge. But I think they're, uh, you know, when you talk about experience, Sophie Ryan, I think up top, uh, senior, I believe. So, uh, yeah, they're really talented up front. But we're going to move on to Neighborville North. Uh, we already discussed it with Dan, but yep. a winner is at Spartan Invitational and the uh, first to the finish. Uh, meet recently this past weekend i mean they're really coming through with big performances uh what are your thoughts on the on these races out of them neighborville north the depth is is really impressive when you look at them we know those top two now have been coming along this season first to finish a you know, really good proving ground for these illinois teams coming into the year and what we've seen out of neighborville north and especially what dan just said with them being better than the team last year that was a top 10 finisher at nxn this is a really deep team as well. They've got the depth to displace a lot of runners on a lot of other top programs around the country. We'll see how they go throughout the season. But this is a team that is 100% a podium team. We have them at 11 right now. I'd like to see them get some head-to-head matchups that they will undoubtedly have against some of the other top teams out of the Heartland or Midwest regions to see how they're comparing those other teams that are coming along. But right now, Neighborville North is 100% a legitimate podium contender this year. Big statement for me, Spartan Invitational. They go up against number 13, Adina, and also Johnson, yeah. Iowa, who fell out of you know deep in the rankings. But those are two nicely ranked teams right from the get-go, Spartan Invitational, and they get a big win there. So you early on, even though it's September and it's early on the season, I think any time you have a chance to really say, you know, we're here this year to come out and, and we're not playing – I think that, that's a good case to make. And so. it's, it's extremely important, especially when you consider the Midwest region, how deep it is that a lot of these programs could easily, you know, however, however good they are, if you don't execute on race day, you could find yourself in that third or fourth position at, na- at the regional, in which case you're fighting for a wild card bid. And now the committee is looking at your resume. What have you done to deserve our 
you know, nod to make it to nationals. And already, Naperville North is beating ranked teams and beating them handily. A Dino could easily auto qualify for NXN, in which case they have those head to head wins over teams that have auto qualified for nationals. So, Naperville North is not only looking well to develop to auto qualify, but they're building a resume right now. So, if they are in a position where they need a wild card bid, they're going to be in a great spot to get one of those. Well, our guy in Illinois, Tony Jones, says there's going to be two Illinois NXN bids this year. Oh, man. Here so we go. He's, he's coming out, out hot with some big. Um, you know proposals so we'll, we'll see if that happens but we're gonna yes really focus a little bit too on mountain vista girls out of colorado they moved up i believe four spots from Big eight jump. to four uh, beating broomfield head to head yes at, at, a, at a meet at liberty liberty bell invite um you know that's important for them because that's in-state rivalry that's mm -hmm. you know kind of taking the you know the proving ground so mountain vista really had a great performance there and that's a hard jump to make you know teams jumping from 18th to 14th or 14th to 11th you can do with teams having an off day jumping making moves jumping at four in the top 10 you're right. displacing some really strong teams so you have to have a performance good enough to warrant that move and they did because they took a commanding win their team looks incredibly good right now i'm super impressed with that squad and you have to be firing on all cylinders to qualify out of the southwest so top four at liberty bell in front of broomfield's uh yeah two so i mean Wow. And also Jennifer Simmons and Carolyn Eck, both under 18 minutes for 5K, which, I mean, if you got two front runners like that, you can be a little bit unstoppable mm -hmm. as long as you have the depth in the back. Yeah. I mean, this Mountain Vista, we thought Broomfield maybe was a team to watch out of Colorado this year, but Mountain Vista is naming themselves number one.